What is happening, people? It is Brian Alls with NeverState.com, and for today's video, I want to talk to you guys about five practical ways that you can start shredding some body fat before summer without having to go into the whole balk cut, balk cut, you know that thing that you try that never really works? And the reason why it doesn't really work is because most people's why is not big enough for that big of an extreme change. Now if you're watching this video and you're saying that's completely not me, I can absolutely drop everything. Say you're eating cookies and pizza every single day and then one day you can just stop, go cold turkey, then I'm not talking about you. This is obviously not your first rodeo. If you can do that, you have done things like this before. You know what works for you, stick with that. But if you're like most people watching this, then maybe you've tried doing like an extreme cut for something and it probably didn't work out quite as well as you had hoped. Maybe you're trying to drop a bunch of body fat for like a vacation, a wedding, a special event, a contest, anything like that. You had great expectations, but then when the rubber hit the road, it just didn't really work out. And again, the reason why is because you went from your normal lifestyle doing whatever you really wanted to do to try to do this extreme Spartan type lifestyle that just, it was too big of a change. So now that we're coming up with the time of the year when the weather starts getting a little bit warmer, now is the time to start making some smaller changes in your life so that you can make a couple small changes going along. It's like if you're gonna change your diet, if you change everything cold turkey today, most likely you're gonna fail. However, if you start changing a couple things and you just tighten it up each week over a couple months, no matter what, you're gonna get better and better. You're gonna see results the entire time. Now, I know a lot of you watching this are thinking that you're super extreme and you're gonna be able to do whatever you want. However, uh, I would tell you to probably give this a try because statistics would show that this type of thing works much better than just strictly going for it. It's not that I don't believe you, I just don't. So what I'm gonna come at you with now are five practical small things you can change about your life or your workouts and your training and things like that that you're gonna be able to apply over the next couple weeks, months, till whenever that goal is coming up and you'll actually get there just by changing small things as opposed to just trying to change your life completely because most of the time, like I said, you're not gonna do it. All right, so the very first one I wanna talk about is probably the easiest to change just because you're gonna be changing up the template of your training. So I know most of you out there train either like bodybuilders or powerlifters, doing a lot of straight sets. You're trying to gain some muscle mass, not gaining too much body fat, things like that, which is great. I commend you. I think that is absolutely amazing. You should do what you want. However, that type of training is not gonna get you as lean as you could be. Instead, what I would encourage you gave a try is just start doing something like supersets, right? Take the antagonistic muscle group and throw it before the main mover. So do your rows before your bench press, Try throwing it together like that. At the absolute least, I would encourage that you do some sort of core training or something during your rest periods rather than just like staring at Instagram or whatever else it is that you're killing the time that's killing us all. If you tried out those supersets and it worked out for you, then maybe try out a giant set. Go antagonistic muscle group to your main muscle mover, do some sort of core exercise, and then 30 seconds of conditioning. Like push a prowler for 50 feet or do some jump rope or do some burpees, right? Just 30 seconds like that. Once you're done that group of exercises, take a small rest Manipulate the weight on the bar, get back to it. That giant set format is how I train all the time. It's what I've done literally for the better part of two decades and I cannot say enough good things about it. But I know a lot of you out there either have a gym that you don't think you can do that in or you just don't want to do that and that's completely fine but I would encourage that you start throwing in maybe like 10 minutes of hard conditioning at the end of your workout. Now I'm not talking about jumping on a treadmill and going for a jog while talking to your buddy about going to the party with that chick. I'm talking about actually panting, like trying to chew the air because there's not enough oxygen in the room. If you want progress, you actually need to force your body into some sort of pain to make it change. But if you don't like that idea, guys, you can throw in a dynamic warm up that's maybe 10 or 15 minutes long at the beginning of your workout where you're doing some jumping, some crawling, some basic calisthenics, stuff, some plyometric stuff, that type of thing is going to get your heart rate up and moving and make you burn more calories throughout your entire workout. It's also going to primer CNS for the work you're about to do. I've done videos on literally every single one of those things I just talked about, guys. So if you do want to start changing a little bit of the template of your workout, then you're just naturally going to be burning more calories throughout the entire thing. You're going to get through it faster. So then if you want to add some extra stuff in, you actually have the time to do that. It's all pluses, guys. That is the number one tip that I can give you right now that is going to change your body for the summer. The second thing that I would highly encourage you guys to start doing is just walking for like 15 minutes a day. Now, I would highly encourage if you guys do have a weight vest that you throw that on, or if you have a backpack, stick a towel in there with a 45 pound plate and throw that on your back, go for a walk then. But guys, I'm busier than most people I know and I can easily fit a 10 to 15 minute walk in every single day. Now. If you can't do that, that's completely fine, guys, but really, uh, you really need to question your priorities at that point because it's 10 minutes of your life. How much Netflix do you need to watch? But not only getting all the health benefits and body fat burning and upping your metabolism, all those things that the walk's going to do, what I really like to use it for, though, is to become more productive. So if I do my walk in the morning, what I like to do is go over a list of things that I actually want to attack that day. You guys will be absolutely shocked at how much more you will actually get done in a day if you make a list and then you cross those things off, not to mention the fact that it is extremely 
satisfying to actually look at a list at the end of the day and be like, I, I did all that. As opposed to just randomly hoping things kind of happen to you throughout the day. So if you take a walk for 15 minutes, it's almost like getting a strategy to attack the day to get as most out of it as possible. And you'll find that you have a lot more time than you think you did because if you actually go at something with a plan of attack, you're actually efficient. Now, if you do it at nighttime, what I like to do is either do the same thing for the next day, I'll get a strategic plan for how I'm gonna attack the next day, or I'll look at my bigger goals and try to break down how I can actually work that into the following weeks, which will then go into the days. Or what I really like to do if I'm walking at night is think about the things that I actually am thankful for. Now I know this sounds all hippy dippy, whatever you guys wanna talk about, but I will say that if you guys lay your head down before you go to sleep thinking about all the bad things in your life and all the anxiety and all those things that you need to wake up to in the morning, ah, you're in for a long night. However, if you take that time to actually look at the things you do have in your life instead of things you don't have and the things you're thankful for, and guys, believe me, there have been a lot of times in my life when there were not a lot of things to be thankful for, but you know what? I'm laying underneath a roof. I'm breathing on my own. I walked here on my legs. Whatever the case may be, figure it out, guys. You have a lot of reasons to be thankful, and if you use that, it's going to bring your hormone levels down. You're gonna sleep better. All types of things are gonna go better for you mentally if you do that, and you can best do that on a walk because your body works better and your brain works better if you have physical activity attached to it. So all those good things are gonna happen, plus it's going to help you sleep, which is the third thing. Your sleep and your recovery for your hormone levels is so important, I cannot describe to you. If your cortisol level is up because you're staying up watching too much lost or dancing with the stars, then trust me, you are not dropping as much body fat or gaining as much muscle as you could be. Now, I'm not talking about those you cannot afford to fit in any more sleep, right? I understand people have busy lives. However, there are a lot of you who are spending a lot of time at night watching videos, Netflix, searching the internet, doing whatever it is that you're doing that's wasting some time, right? I would encourage you to stop doing that at least for the last hour before you go to bed because there's not a lot that is going on mentally there that is going to help you sleep. What I'd rather see you do is take that last hour before bed and maybe go for that walk that I was talking about, get a plan for the next day, think about your dreams, think about the positive things, the things you're thankful for, but also you can use that time to roll out on a lacrosse ball, stretch out, do all the active recovery stuff that you're supposed to be doing that you really don't take the time to do. Guilty. But if you took that time to actually apply it towards bettering your training and bringing down your stress levels of your body, you would be shocked at how much easier dropping body fat and gaining muscle actually would be. You would be astounded at how much stress just taking an hour off of your nightly sleep does, guys. Things like that, things like not taking the knots out of your back and your hips and things there are so many active things you can do to help your body along the way because when your body is going through a stressful thing like not having enough sleep or fighting a sickness or whatever it is, it does not care about dropping body fat. It does not care about getting muscle. It cares about getting better. And what you're doing is sticking in a position where it never feels better. So it's not going to do the things that you want it to do because it's just worrying about surviving. Treat it better and it will give you the results that you want. Number four and the most important, I don't know why I put it number four, is going to be your diet. So guys, you've heard it a thousand times, you cannot out-train a bad diet, but I cannot tell you enough. Guys, whenever I get emails of people saying, hey, I wanna gain mass or I want to drop body fat, what exercise should I do? What program should I do? I, I always tell them like, that has nothing to do with that. It has something to do with it. But so much more of it has to do with what you're doing in the kitchen. Now, if you guys have been a fan of the channel for any amount of time, you'll know that I do not count macros. I think counting macros is stupid, at least for me. It would turn me into a crazy person, so I don't do it. And I don't give people advice on that because I do not give people advice on things that I have not done myself. Instead, what I do is base my eating off of principles. And currently what I'm doing right now is something similar to like a vertical diet. So I'm eating a lot of like, regular meat and plain white rice. Now this is just for me personally, each person is gonna be different. However, my body does not respond well to carbohydrates when they come in the starchy form. Something like rice actually puts body fat on me even in this type of situation. So a real simple thing for me to do is start switching out some of my starchy carbs with some green stuff. Now I'm not telling you to go crazy and go paleo or do anything like that. All I'm saying is if you start swapping out one or two of your meals that have starchy carbs with green carbs, then you'll be shocked at the difference that will actually make. And by green carbs, I mean vegetables, people, not like, green pasta and stuff. When you do choose to eat starch carbohydrates, either keep them first thing in the morning or directly after your workout. These are very basic principles that have been good since the beginning of lifting weights began lifting weights. But honestly, for most people sitting in this boat this far out from the summertime when you actually need to look great, the biggest thing that I tell people to do is just be honest with yourself and truly audit what you're really doing. Now, I'm not telling you to keep a food log because I think that's stupid. I would never tell anyone to do that. What I would encourage you to do is just keep something in your pocket or on your phone where every single time that you do something cheat related, make a mark of it. So every time you take a cheat meal, 
hit that mark. Every time you go out drinking, hit that mark. Every time you're at the office and someone has a birthday cake and you take some, hit that mark. Every time you stop by the gas station and you grab a piece of candy, hit that mark. Right, so just be honest with yourself. If you actually sat back and looked at how often you're throwing in little cheat things, you'd be astounded. Now I'm not telling you you can't do that. I'm not judging you at all. If you have 30 tick marks, you're probably doing better than me. But what I am gonna tell you is if you cut that number by like a quarter, you're just gonna see results automatically. If you stop drinking soda, you're gonna see results automatically. If you're one of those dudes who thinks Gatorade is healthy, stop doing that, results automatically. If you like drink four IPAs every night with dinner, it's a lot of calories, bro. But you'll see results automatically. Look, there's absolutely nothing that I've said in this video yet that you guys do not know. It's just hard to apply, right? You can be disciplined with so many things in your life, but when it comes to this, it's just, it's especially hard because there's so much temptation everywhere. Look, I feel you, I get it, right? I'm not telling you to go cold turkey and quit everything. All I'm saying is cut it back. The road is long, right? If you have three months to get ready, if you cut everything out now, you are not going to make it. Cut a couple things out. Like I said, it can always get tighter. That's a beautiful thing about a diet, right? If you start worrying about how much calories are in your ketchup and the toothpaste that you brush your teeth with, you're never gonna make it in this game. Start cutting out pizza and soda, cheeseburgers and burritos. And then after you get over the thoughts of suicide, then you can start cutting out more things and it just gets tighter and tighter from there. But conversely, guys, if you're one of those psychos who thinks they can never cheat at all, you're an idiot. Now that I've been lucky enough to hang around with some really really top tier athletes in this strength world, one thing I could say is that they get away with a lot more than you think they do. Just because that Flex Magazine told you that they didn't eat anything but boiled chicken and raw rice for the last 16 years, you don't need to believe it. When someone turns to you and says, would you like some of this? And you say, no, I can't. You look like a jerk. Guilty. I'm not saying eat it. I'm just saying be more polite and you can do anything. Never ever tell someone, no, I can't have that. Starving people are gonna punch you in the face. But guys, the entire body comp game is your diet. So make sure you get that locked in. There are 10,000 things that work, guys. All that will tell you is pick one and stick to it. If you like the vertical diet, do that. If you like paleo, do that. If you like keto, do that. Do whatever it is that you're gonna do, but stick to it. Stop jumping around, stop doing this, then trying that, trying that. Do not have diet ADD, do not have training ADD. Pick something, stick to it for a couple months, see if it works, keep it worked, throw away it didn't, move on to the next thing. Start testing, use your body as a lab. Before you know it, after six months to six years, you're gonna know exactly what you need and you're gonna be making progress like crazy. Which finally brings us to big number five, which is just do something different, guys. Now, I'm not talking extreme here. Different for some people could be starting a new sport, right? There are so many people that have asked me about starting Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I could not recommend that higher than just about anything in the world. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to me is like breathing. When I'm not doing it, it I'm a different person, man. I need that in my life. Picking up a side sport or maybe your company has a softball team or whatever the case may be. Do something that's fun and active. For some people, doing something new might be not taking the same parking spot at work every single day and choosing to park three blocks away and walking in every day. Taking their lunch and going for a walk all the time. Doing a stand-up desk. It'd be very small changes, guys, but do something different. If you train powerlifting your entire life, try CrossFit for three months. There is nothing wrong with trying different things. You would be shocked at the difference that you could get and the benefits you can get if you learn Olympic lifting, you're gonna take something from it and apply it to your strongman training. If you're not a strongman and you try that, it's gonna to apply to your powerlifting. Guys, don't be so pigeonholed into the same thing. Be willing to try new things. It's only going to help and increase not only your knowledge about the sport, but it's really going to help your body, right? Because the enemy of losing body fat is efficiency. The more efficient that you are at a movement, the less body fat you're gonna burn. Burpees are so hard because no one does them efficiently. Once your body learns how to do them efficiently, they're really not tough and you need to move on to something else, which is why you need to spend a lot of time doing things that you really don't like doing, like that stupid stair stepper, the escalator to nowhere that burns like crazy. If you hate it, do it. The reason why you hate it is because your body's fighting it. Your body wants to stay in homeostasis, does not want to change no matter what, okay? Right now, it knows it's surviving. You start throwing in other things, it starts getting unhappy with you and it's gonna let you know about it. However, that unhappiness is where that change is gonna happy, happen. Hey, time to go. So you need to spend time doing that. Guys, do something new, change your hobbies, change your way of lifting, change something, okay? The new stimulus is gonna do great things. It's gonna be more fun for you. It's gonna open up your mind. And guys, if you're in this for the long run, it's really not a big deal. If you're lifting for the next 20 years, the next three months doing something different is just gonna get you more shredded, teach you new things, and probably get you further down the road in the long run. So there you guys go. That is all I have for today. I'm sorry it's been so long. Literally, I went to the Arnold, got home from the Arnold, left for New York City where I had to do a bunch of tests for my health, where I got some answers. It's absolutely incredible. A whole nother video's coming up about that. But directly after that, I went to the Lift to Autism. After the Lift for Autism, I went to Nike headquarters, 
which brings us to right now. So I haven't even really been at the gym to record anything, so that's why you guys haven't got anything. I haven't been dead. Thank you guys so much for asking about it. I did get a couple emails asking if I was dead. But I will be catching up with you guys later in the week. Until I do go out to something amazing, guys, keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other. That was a lot of talking. I'll see you then.